Um, we're going to get started. It's already a uh, few minutes past nine o'clock. I'm Kunal Sen, the director of UniWider. Uh, really excited to see all of you here in person and, of course, virtually. I want to invite Bart Vegar Solyam, who's the director general of NORAD, to give his welcome address to all of you. We are indebted in UniWider that NORAD has been supporting us, uh, not only for this conference, but for the entire program that you're going to listen to with the different sessions, the domestic resource mobilization, the domestic revenue mobilization. And so, wonderful to have Bart here in person. Bart, if you want to give a few open, opening remarks, thank you. So, good morning, uh, everyone, and uh, uh, welcome to Oslo on this um, uh, sunny, crisp, crisp autumn day. It's like this every day in Oslo. <laughs> Uh, it's also a great honor for me to, uh, to open this important and really timely uh, conference. And I should add uh, also a few words about uh, our support for uh, Univider, which, which is not a gift because Univider is a valued partner and a really, really useful partner in our Tax for Development uh, program. Of course, through their domestic revenue mobilization program, but it doesn't only produce uh, excellent uh, research of high academic quality, it also manages, we believe, to connect with policy relevance to uh, authorities in the global south, which is, of course, important uh, for us. And this also, uh, and, and the conference also uh, underlines something that is really important for us uh, in NURAD, which is to use knowledge and insight in our grant management and in our policy advice. Actually, we have an internal advice, and I'll say it in Norwegian first because it's much better in Norwegian, uh, because it rhymes in Norwegian. It's fakta har makta, or in English, facts inform policy. And Facts, of course, it's because it rhymes. It's about knowledge and insights uh, informing policy and, and being able to use that in our grant management uh, uh, thoroughly. Uh, and that is maybe more needed now than in a long time because we are, uh, we are in a decade which is quite different from and much more challenging than we believed it would be. So we have behind us really now a generation of immense social and economic program, progress globally. Uh, I, I usually start this way so we shouldn't forget what we've been through. So if we go back to 1950, around 70%, two out of three people globally lived in extreme poverty. Before COVID, it was less than 10%. And also, just looking at the last generation or a little less, from the year 2000 until COVID hit us, child mortality was halved globally. Maternal mortality was down 40%. Sometimes people tell me, because I'm fond of, not fond of numbers, that, well, these are only numbers. But for the children, who live, it's not numbers. And for their mothers who live to tell and raise them, it's not numbers. This is real progress. But uh, it has changed. Uh, and after this economic progress, we are also now facing a real setback. It started with a slowing of, uh, of a social and economic progress before COVID. But of course, COVID was a big economic shock, not least for developing economies. Uh, and we still see that poverty numbers uh, have not come back, or poverty reduction numbers have not come back at the level they were. And I think it's also important to understand it was a health crisis, but it was also a so broad social and economic setback in crisis in many developing countries, affecting uh, 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 people across the board. Then, of course, adding to that is the global effects on Russia's brutal attack on Ukraine, uh, 
uh, not least on food security globally. Uh, and I think also uh, it's important in this uh, context to look at two other tendencies. And, and, the, uh, and one of them is the gradual decline in political and civil rights, which is also a change from decades of progress, which we are seeing now, and which is making social and economic progress more challenging uh, and working conditions more challenging. And behind all this is, of course, the great development destroyer, climate change, which is already making itself very visible, for instance, in the Sahel, in South Asia, and other regions, but which will have an immense and negative effect on social and economic growth and progress in the decades to come. Uh, all this creates a very different environment around us. If you look at, for instance, humanitarian needs, they have doubled in only five years. We are now very far from reaching the SDG goals, which we in 2015 thought were challenging, ambitious, yes, but possible. Now it's highly unlikely to reach many of them. And the financing gap, uh, the gap between what's actually needed and what's available through finance is much uh, bigger. So, of course, we need in this situation to exhaust all sources of financing, but there is no way around the fact that strengthening domestic tax systems to mobilize resources needed for development holds a key to turning around this and reaching the SDG goals. And I would say it is more urgent now than it has been in the past. There is, of course, hope uh, uh, and progress. International tax cooperation is like you will now, seeing more rapid changes now than maybe in the last 100 years. There's a potential to reshape the economic landscape and power sustainable development. Um, uh, and, and, and just a few numbers to remind you of some of these advantages. So, according to the OECD Center for Tax Policy uh, and Administration, the exchange of information has led to, uh, to 41 billion US dollars in additional revenues in developing countries. 41 billion. And only the UNDP OECD project Tax Inspectors Without Border has alone led to over uh, 2 billion US dollars in additional revenues. This means more money for local healthcare, schools, and so on. Uh, it's numbers that count. Um, Norway and NORAD is an ambitious and reliable partner in these efforts. Uh, in, in accordance with the uh, Addis Ababa uh, tax initiative, we have substantially increased our support for domestic resource mobilization. Since 2015, we have increased from around 14 billion, a million US dollars annually to more than 30 million US dollars in uh, uh, last year, in 2022. Um, it's, of course, uh, about collecting more and better, but it's also about uh, reducing revenue losses through illicit financial flows and corruption. And I'm pleased to see that the program for this conference tackles both of these uh, angles to revenue mobilization. From Norway's side, we support this agenda on many different levels, I would say, from bold, broad multilateral uh, um, action for new tax norms to targeted capacity building in developing countries. And our goal is to see tax systems that are more predictable, more transparent, more progressive and fairer. Um, working in a domestic context with national tax, tax system is key, but it is not enough. We also thus sort, support key institutions in international tax cooperation. The OECD uh, work to mainstream their work on tax policy and administration to be uh, more aligned with the needs of developing countries um, we, the result is that developing countries can increasingly uh, effectively receive tax-relevant information from other countries, uh, which increase their revenues. 
And of course, we also support the UN Tax Committee to increase their capacity to deliver high quality technical guidance, uh, which is particularly valuable for many developing countries. I, uh, I want to end this by leaving you uh, with a sense of urgency. Many of the people with knowledge and know-how of how to be able to strengthen res domestic resource mobilization to finance sustainable development is gathered here in this room and listening in on the conference today. Um, you have a responsibility to use your knowledge, work together and contribute to make sure that knowledge and facts inform policy decision. And then of course we, as one of the richest countries in the world and a donor, we have a responsibility, first of all of course, to finance, uh, to spend 1% of our gross domestic income, which is, uh, there's broad political support for in Norway, to spend these resources well, uh, or as I would say, to let fakta ha makta, to let, ha makta, to let uh, uh, facts inform policy in our work, so that we actually spend these resources and use our knowledge to, uh, to mobilize domestic resources even better in the future. Thank you, and have a few great days here in Oslo. Thank you, Bart Vega Soliel, Regional Norad, for your welcome address. I mean, the point that you make that it's so important for us who work on domestic revenue mobilization to bring evidence, analytical rigor, and inform policy in what we do. And I think the conference itself is going to be an example of exactly how we do that in UNUI and with our partners in many different countries. So welcome to the wider development conference, Revving Up Revenue for Development, the Role of Domestic Resource Mobilization. This is UNUI's first major conference in Norway, uh, in Norway and delighted to hold it in the wonderful city of Oslo. I'm very pleased to see so many of you here in person, and we also have a large online audience uh, through our hybrid platform, and they will very much engage with us in different sessions going forward. So UNIWIDER is a policy think tank, research institute, and UN agency all rolled into one, and part of the United Nations University. We work on informing economic and social policies with cutting edge research and policy analysis, especially in the global south. In 2019 to 2023, our research focused on transformation. How should economies, states, or societies be transformed we have to see significant steps towards achieving Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. We've recently produced a synthesis report of our research on transforming economies, states, and societies, and the copies of the report are available not just outside in the publication desk outside the auditorium, but also available online. Please do take a moment to read the report and learn about the research that we've been doing for the past five years. One of the key SDGs we work on is SDG 17, Partnerships for Development. And one critical goal of SDG 17 is mobilizing domestic revenue for development. The conference itself is centered around the challenges of how developing countries can better use and mobilize their domestic resources to accelerate progress towards the goals of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. As the Director General mentioned, as we gathered today, we recognize we're living in critical times facing challenges that are both complex and multifaceted. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the heightened political tensions, such as Russia's war with Ukraine, has caused a significant negative impact on the prospects of development for countries in the global south. The present circumstances have illustrated the urgency of collective efforts working together to address these challenges. The deadline for reaching the 17 SDGs is fast approaching, just over seven years now that we left to 2030. Now, determination to achieve these goals must be matched with strategic actions and robust financial commitments. However, as again the Director General mentioned, the finance gap required to realize these goals has grown due to these recent global shocks. The flow of aid from wealthy countries to low-income countries has diminished, and many developing countries find this was allocating a substantial portion of their revenues to debt payments instead of the critical services they need to reach the goals outlined in the SDGs.
The next two and a half days will be about debating, discussing the solutions, the tools to make the SDGs a possible reality, despite the strong headwinds. The role of domestic revenue mobilization has become critical, not merely as a synonym for taxation, which is often a mistake, but as a comprehensive approach that encompasses savings, non-tax revenues such as remittances, tackling illicit financial flows, and bolstering social protection. So the way we see domestic revenue mobilization is much more broader than pure tax. And that's very important for us, and you'll see that in the program in the next two and a half days. At UNI Wider, we deeply engage in the realms of domestic revenue mobilization. Over the past four years, we have intensified our focus on this topic, and we express our gratitude to NORAD for the invaluable support for the domestic revenue mobilization program, which we call DRM in short. This conference presents the research, the first phase of the program, the, the, four, first, the four years that we have been working on, specifically on, on DRM, sub supported by NORAD, and we're going to, this program ends, this first phase ends this year. However, our program is not only about research, but also been deeply committed to strengthening the capacities of our partner organizations, such as revenue authorities and policy think tanks in the global south. Together, we are co-creating knowledge that we believe addresses the unique needs of countries in transition and contributes to the greater global good. And I'm delighted that so many of our colleagues from the revenue authorities and policy think tanks and universities in the Global South are here today, both in person but also virtually. So the conference. The structure of this conference features five plenary sessions here in this auditorium at the beginning or end, beginning or end of each day of the conference. So there's something happening, a plenary or a keynote happening in the morning, the beginning or the end of the day including keynote addresses from colleagues such as Hanan Mossi, the Chief Economist of UNECA, Professor Neil Johansson of the University of Copenhagen, and policy, policy plenaries on financing sustainable development, which takes place later today, the impact of our revenue authority research, research collaborations in Sub-Saharan Africa, and the critical issue of illicit financial flows. We also have five rounds of four concurrent parallel sessions, the details of which can be found in the program on our website, that's the best way to check the program, and the sessions, but also posted at the door of every session room, and which deals with various aspects of domestic revenue mobilization, from building equitable tax systems, harnessing the potential of extractive industries for development, exploring fiscal, st uh, fiscal st uh, states, and the challenge of raising domestic savings in Sub-Saharan Africa. Additional sessions will also be held on the government revenue data set which UNE Wider uh, puts together, GRD in short, and there will be opportunities for networking and knowledge exchange. The Wider Development Conference series is centered around a desire to create a space for knowledge sharing and a forum for debate and discussion where scholars and policymakers from around the world come together to, to share the unique insights and perspectives. That's the intention of this conference series that we've been running every year, including the one, the one we have in here in Oslo. And so I'm very, I'm very, uh, very much hope that you'll have a productive two and a half days in Oslo for those who are here in person, but also those who would attend this conference virtually.